Looking for a super vibey new microphone for your studio? Come on, I got you covered. What's up YouTube, welcome back, my name's Tony. So a couple months back I was on my way home and I noticed on the side of the road that one of my neighbors was throwing away an old rotary phone. Now I've been hearing for years that it can be a really fun DIY project to take one of those and turn it into a lo-fi microphone. So naturally, that's what I did, and here it is. Now you really don't need to keep the bass on it like I did, really all you need is the handset. But frankly I thought this turned out pretty good and it makes a cool decoration for the studio. And here's how it sounds. As you can hear it gives you that real cool gritty over the phone kind of sound. You can get to that sound a lot easier with one of these mics than messing around with filters and distortion. So, just a couple of days ago, I managed to pick up another old rotary phone. So I figured what a great opportunity to show you guys how to make a lo-fi telephone microphone for yourselves. Now before we get started guys, don't forget to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that notification bell, so that you can see more content like this when I post it. And now let's dive right in. So the process is actually pretty simple. We're going to open up the body of the thing, we're going to remove the handset, and we're going to wire it in such a way where we're going to be using the speaker side of the headset as our microphone. So why the speaker side? Frankly because it's just an easier mod to do it that way. Old phones like these utilize what's known as a carbon microphone. Carbon microphones were great for use in telephones because they were very cheap and had a very narrow frequency band, meaning that there was less audio information to actually have to transmit between two phones. You can wire up the microphone side to be usable as well, but to do that you either need to attach a battery pack to power the thing or attach a transformer to be able to use phantom power to power that side of the microphone. So if you guys are familiar with the Yamaha Subkick microphone, you'd know that basically what that is is an 8 inch speaker wired in reverse so that it sends an electrical signal rather than receives an electrical signal, essentially turning it into a microphone. Well, that's what we're going to be doing with this phone today. All right, guys, so here's what you're going to need to get started. You need a soldering iron, you need a Phillips head screwdriver, you need a solder sucker, a couple of claw hands to hold your work together, some solder, of course, a cable end. I'm using a male XLR cable end, but you could just as easily attach this into like a quarter inch TS cable so you could plug it into a guitar amp, wire stripper, heat shrink wrap, and of course your phone. Now, here's two soldering tips that I've found incredibly, incredibly helpful. If you can find yourself some unused dentistry tools, these are made of aluminum, and aluminum does not stick to solder. So you can use these tools to kind of hold your work together without worrying about it sticking to the work. And the second thing is that reading glasses are basically just two little magnifying glasses you can put right on your face. I find in a lot of cases making the work just a little bit bigger, a little more easy to see, makes all the difference. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open up the phone and detach the handset from the body of it. Now that's pretty easy to do, there's just one screw at the base of the thing. And there you go. So the wire for the phone kind of winds through the uh, internal mechanism of the whole thing. Now you could just cut it off here and that would be fine. In fact, a lot of people that do these projects detach the wires right from the headset and replace it just with an XLR cable. But like I said earlier, I like the aesthetic of these old phones and I figure there's already a cable attached to it, why not use it? This cable snakes up into this little panel here and attaches with four cables. The cables are easy enough to pop out, although for these ones hidden behind here, it might be easier to use something like this dentist tool to pry it apart. So if you just want your microphone to be the handset, then you can take this part and just get rid of it. But if you want to do like I did and keep the base as kind of a display for your studio, then just put it aside for later. All right, so at this point, we can unscrew the earpiece of the phone and pull the microphone up. The yellow and black wires are attached to the speaker, so we're gonna take the yellow and black wires to solder to our cable end. Now, I did some experimenting on my phone microphone, and I found that it sounded best when I attached yellow to pin two and black to pin three. So if you're just gonna do the one mod to your phone, you can just cut these cables right off and not worry about them. I'm going to keep them attached because I may do a video for the carbon microphone mod. The next thing we're going to do is cut off the tips of these wires, strip the wire to expose the copper underneath. Okay, so at this point you're going to want to do two things. Firstly, we want to cut a piece of the heat shrink to place over those two wires, but we're not going to shrink it yet. Make sure you leave yourself a little bit of room to actually work with the wire. 
Then you're going to place the back part of your cable end on top of that as well. All right, now we can get ready to do the actual soldering. So another quick tip for soldering is that the teeth on these claws are generally pretty pointy. Those can damage your cable. So I generally take a small piece of cardboard, in this case I just ripped up one of my business cards, and wrap it around your cable just to protect it from the teeth. Okay, so we're gonna start by soldering the yellow cable to pin two. And if you have long hair like me, be sure to pull it back. Learned that lesson the hard way a couple of times. So if you guys are new to soldering, it's pretty easy, but it does take some practice. The main thing that you want to remember is that you're not just trying to melt a bunch of solder on top of some metal. What you want to be doing is heating up the metal itself and letting the solder melt on that. As my cousin once told me, you're heating up the work, not the solder. So you want to start by applying some solder to your iron. A decent amount on there. And then touch it down to the work. You'll kind of see the solder on your iron start to flow a little bit. That's how you know it's hot enough. And you can bring the rest of your solder in. Again, touching it to the work and not the iron. Let it melt and then let it harden on its own. If you blow on it to cool down, it could cause what's called a cold solder joint, where it's cool, but it's not fully adhered to the material. All right, now we're gonna go black to pin three. If you've still got some solder on your iron, knock it against your table to knock it off. And then make sure to clean your iron. I mentioned that you need a solder sucker before. Now I was working with a new cable tip. If you're working with one that's been used already, you'd want to clean off the uh, post that you're gonna be soldering to by heating up the solder, loading up this guy and Boom, getting rid of the old solder. Once you got those soldered together, you can shrink up your heat shrink. If you have a heat gun, that's the way to go. Otherwise, plain old lighter will work. Just make sure not to leave the fire on any one spot for too long. All right, let's put this bad boy together and see what we got. Check, check, check. This one's a lot louder than mine is. So there it is, telephone microphone. If all you want is this handset to be your microphone, then that's all of this video that you need to watch. But if you're like me and you want to have a cool looking stand for this thing, stay tuned. So in the base of these phone mics, you got your ringer mechanism over here, your dialing mechanism over here. I wanted to keep the dial on there so that it looks like a rotary phone, which means a lot of this crap has to stay on there as well. But what gives us the space to store the cable in here is taking out the ringer mechanism. So the first thing we'll have to do is remove the old telephone cable and remove and detach the wires from the ringer mechanism. So you can pretty easily follow those all the way over to here. And again, using a flat a flathead screwdriver or your old uh, dentistry tools, you can just start detaching things from the pegboard here. All right, once you've got that disconnected, there's just one screw right in the middle here that holds this whole ringer mechanism in. So get rid of that and the whole thing just pops right out. Then the last thing to do is just to make the hole there a tiny bit larger so you can fit your XLR cable right into there. Now there's probably a more elegant way to do this, but I just took a wire snipper and went to town on mine. All right, then take the one screw that held the bottom back together, pop it back in there. And there you have it, fully functioning telephone microphone and a cool display piece for your studio. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video and would like to see more content like this one, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that when I do post a new video, you'll know about it. And leave me a bunch of comments down in the comment section there. Let me know what you thought about this mod. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. I'll see you next time.